Arthur, what are you doing here? I'll get right to the point. I need to borrow a substantial amount of money. You already owe me a substantial amount of money. And I intend to pay back every penny. Okay. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. This isn't for a bet on a dog race or the Tony Awards. This is to salvage my self-respect. What are you talking about? Doug and Carrie are in financial trouble, and they're going to his parents for help. They never even thought to ask me. It was as if I didn't exist. Uh, I guess they thought if you had money, you wouldn't be spending your golden years living in their cellar. <laughs> you have quite a little sadistic streak, don't you? I'm not loaning you any more money, Arthur. Please. No. Damn it, I need this. If I can't walk into that house and slam a check on a table, I'm nothing to them. Nothing. Please, son. I'm begging you. How much? $12,000. $12,000? I don't have anything even close to that. I'll pay you like a hundred bucks or something. I see. Well, thank you for your time. I didn't mean to eavesdrop, but it sounded like you were having some money woes. <laughs> Who isn't, right? I'm not. So, uh, would you like to come over for dinner tomorrow so we can, you know, discuss things further? <laughs> I'd be delighted. <laughs> So was dinner all right? Yes, it was marvelous, Veronica. Thank you. I thought it'd be nicer to eat out here than in the dingy old kitchen. Kind of fun, right? I want to apologize again for the various items that rolled off my plate. <laughs> I shouldn't have served garbanzo beans. They're my weakness. I'm sorry. Well. Must be very late. What is it, 10, 10 30? Quarter to seven. Right. <laughs> I guess I was just distracted by my daughter and son in law's financial dilemma, the one I was hoping to help them with. Of course. It's just that. What? Well, the banks are closed for the day. There's really nothing much we can do until morning. <laughs> I suppose not. <laughs> You are. When I woke up and you weren't in bed, I I, I thought you'd left. No, no, I, I couldn't sleep. It's just as well. I now know where to buy a kitchen knife that could slice through an automobile fender. Tonight was wonderful, Arthur. Yes, I had a very nice time as well, Ronnie. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's almost morning. I'd love to get to the bank and present those kids with a check before they head off to work. Yeah, well, I, uh, I really don't have any money. <laughs> what? I live on Social Security and what Spence gives me. But I don't understand. What about the supermarket? You said you're a part owner. I stretch the truth. I uh, just shop there. <laughs> oh, I needed that money. I was counting on it. I was going to slap it down on the table for those kids. Well, I'm awfully sorry. Why the hell did you put me through this whole charade? Charade? You crumb. I thought you said you had a good time. Of course I did. You were dangling $12,000 in front of me like a doggy treat. Well, pardon me. I didn't know this was such a formal business arrangement. See, I was stupid enough to think you might actually like me. Here, wait. Here you go. Here is 20 bucks for your gigolo services. I'm sorry my company was so unbearable. 